Good afternoon, James Hendricks, Ozark Barbecue Headquarters. I'm gonna be going over a new recipe for you guys today with Bone Maker Minerals Game Products. We got the Game Seasoning Bone Maker Game Rub. We got a couple different game seasoning out there. We got the Bird Rub and we got the Game Rub. Today we're gonna to be hitting the Game Rub. We're gonna be using venison, uh, ground up venison. We're gonna be doing a smoked meatloaf. Um, you're probably like, smoked meatloaf? I've never heard of a smoked meatloaf. Yes, there is such a thing as a smoked meatloaf. Now, products we're gonna be using today. Ground up venison, one pound. Worcestershire sauce, the game rub. Heinz chili sauce. Breadcrumbs, you know me, roasted garlic. Sweet peppers, sweet onion, brown sugar, the bone, barbecue juice, one egg. And that's what's going into our meatloaf today, fellas. Ladies and gents, Bone Maker Nation, our friends and family who are probably watching this and laughing at us. So what I'm gonna do here, guys, I'm gonna get started. Just like when I did the meatballs, you guys saw in the last episode, I'm just gonna put everything in a bowl and we're gonna get our hands into it. You're gonna notice I always like going with the egg first. Don't let the shells drop. As you notice, the table was not as strong as the egg, so I had to go for the pan. All right, next, I'm gonna wipe my hands up a little bit. Worcestershire. I'm gonna tell you what, guys, this is one of the greatest inventions out there for cooking, because I love this. I could drink it from the bottle. I use it in a lot of recipes. When I'm making pancakes, what we like to call pancakes, which is just a hamburger, venison hamburger, we call them pancakes, Worcestershire. What I'm gonna do, like we told you guys before, when I did the meatballs, I kind of eyeball my stuff. There is an amount that we're looking for, so we'll post the ingredients and how much, but really all I'm looking for is a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire because I only have one pound of meat. You know, the bigger amount of you're trying to do, the more of the stuff you're gonna need. Just a couple tablespoons, what I'm looking for. Heinz chili sauce. Same, just a couple tablespoons. You're like, man, James, you're adding a lot of moisture to this. Yes, I am, but what is moisture to this, baby? It's called flavor time. We're going for that flavor vortex. Just a couple tablespoons of chili sauce. Personally, it kind of takes, you know, when you're doing a meatloaf, regular meatloaf, old grandma meatloaf, you use tomato sauce, you use ketchup. Instead of using ketchup, boom, I'm hitting it with some Heinz chili sauce. Next. Sweet peppers. I chopped these up for our little demonstration today. Some of those fancy cooks that has those really good kitchens, you know, they have everything in a little nice jar and they dump it in. Uh, me and my buddy, Nathan, redneck cooking at its finest. Plastic bag. I'm gonna use about a quarter of a cup. I enjoy peppers. Um, some of you guys that who really like, you could throw a jalapeno in there. Fortunately, we have the game rub. I don't need a jalapeno, I got game rub. Next, sweet pep, sweet onions. We talked about this before. I prefer sweet onions. A lot of guys say yellow onion, fine. Use a yellow onion. Now I'm not going as heavy as I did on the meatballs because I got peppers in there already. So I'm doing about, I'm doing less than what I did last time. Third of a cup, you know? So you're gonna say, James, what's next? I'm gonna tell you. Game rubs is what's next, baby. This is where it comes from, right here. You guys haven't tried it, you're missing out. One of the complete game rubs, seasonings on the market. If you go out there and you go to any store, you pick up a game seasoning, taste it. I would say open the thing up in the store and taste it. Because I'm going to tell you what, if they're not offering you a sample of it, don't buy it. Because I'm going to tell you what, you got to taste it. Because I'm going to tell you, it ain't going to taste real good. You taste our stuff, you're going to be like, you, you all heard slap your mama. This is beyond slap your mama. This is like slap your dead mama, you know, your dead grandmama, your dead dare mama. You know, that's what we're talking about. I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna go a little heavy because remember, this is ground venison. Yes, I woke up this morning and I had a little bit too much of the monster, you know? And you're like, James, you're not supposed to be drinking monster. You are correct, so don't tell my wife. Next, this is the sweetener. I like to put a little bit of brown sugar in my meatloaf. Just a couple tablespoons. 
cook tablespoons. You're gonna see that on a few of the other recipes that come up later on. Next, I'm gonna add more moisture, people. We got the bone maker juice, baby. You know, we got the bone maker juice that goes on our corn to feed our deer. We got the bone maker juice to go on our and go on our toppings. Uh, let's just get it on in there. Not much, people. Not much. I probably I, I probably did an eighth of a cup, if that. And I'll get the precise measurements. We got it written down. I'll get you those. Now you're saying, James, once you get this meatloaf put together, what do you put on top of it? Well, what I put on top of it is basically what I just, you saw me put in it. Worcestershire, a little bit of Heinz, a little bit of bone juice, and that's it. Mix, whisk it together, and then that's what I'm gonna be using to base this. But when I first put it together and put it on the smoker, 300 degrees, we're, we're not gonna have anything on top because I want that smoke to kind of hit that, that venison real good. And then we're gonna add that later on through the cooking process. And after about 30 minutes, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna wipe it down. Now, time to get our hands dirty. A lot of moisture in this. So what does that mean, fellas? What's that mean? We gotta get to the breadcrumbs. Now, this is one of those things. These breadcrumbs, best choice breadcrumbs. You got, don't be, don't be saying, mm -mm, mm -mm. don't go a little bit, don't be scared. Cause all you gotta do is add a little bit more moisture to it. Now take care of it. I'm gonna put a lot of breadcrumbs in this one. I wanna soak up that moisture, give it a nice solid base, cause we gotta put this together. Oh man, it's coming together right now. My mouth is watering. One of my favorite things is meatloaf. You know, at barbecue competitions, a lot of times when we have sponsors and we have friends come, one of the requests I always get is a smoked meatloaf. People love the smoked meatloaf because it's not something normal, you know? It's not something they, they eat every day. Uh, smoked meatloaf is, you know, is now, as the last couple of years, a lot of pit masters are coming out with their own variation of a smoked meatloaf. I mean, it's just, you know, it's kind of a game changer compared to your grandma's meatloaf. Now, don't tell that to your grandma because, you know, I'd still eat her meatloaf with a nice piece of Texas toast. And we're talking, you know, some mashed potatoes, mm. you know, some asparagus. Mm. All right, guys, we're getting there. A little bit more breadcrumbs. Now, really, the breadcrumb, guys, we can tell you how much to start with. Breadcrumbs are all about a feel. It's all about a feel. You're gonna tell when there's enough moisture out of this to make it, because we're making, we're, it's meatloaf, we're making a loaf. You know, we're not making meatballs here. We're not, we're not just smashing it down into pancakes. I mean, we're making a loaf. And we need that loaf to be together. That's what that egg is for, the egg's a binder. All right, we're there. You might say, James, did you overwork that meat? Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you overdo it. But really, you know, everything about cooking is just getting in there and, and filling it, you know? A lot of times with my meatloafs, if I'll prepare this a day before, then I'll take saran wrap and I'll wrap this up and then put it in the refrigerator and let it set overnight in the saran wrap and let it kind of just combine together. Just let it gel. For today's purpose of cooking, you know, it, it's gonna go straight to the smoker, 300 degrees, you know? Now it, it's gonna, it might flake on you a little bit, but you know what? That's just gonna tell you next time, maybe I should have used another egg. Maybe I should use some more breadcrumbs. But you know what? Cooking ain't, cooking isn't perfect. Cooking's getting in there and doing what you love, what you have passion for. So right now, my loaf is made, smoked, venison meatloaf. This is gonna change your life, people. I'm gonna get this put on the smoker. 30 minutes, we're gonna mop it down with the sauce. So we're gonna get off of here. I'm gonna run to the smoker. We're gonna show you what's going on. 300 degrees, 30 minutes. We're gonna mop on the Worcestershire chili sauce, 
bone maker juice. Get a nice little sheen on top, and then we're gonna go. You're saying, James, how long is this gonna go for? What's the temp, guys? 160. It's ground, 160. All right, this is James Hendricks, Ozark Barbecue Headquarters, talking about bone maker seasoning. We'll see you in a little bit. Hey, back at you. This is James, Ozark Barbecue Kitchen. Right now, I'm getting ready. We talked about the meatloaf. I got it set in here. We're getting ready to throw it on the smoker. I did not add any more extra bone maker rub on the top of it, just a heads up. I already got it on the inside, and plus we're gonna be mopping it here in a little bit in the first 30 minutes. In the next 30 minutes, we're mopping it each time. So I don't wanna add any more rub to the top of it. I'm gonna add it to, at the last 30 minutes. I'm gonna do a little sprinkling dust on the top. Right now, 300 degrees, first 30 minutes, it's going on the smoker. All right, guys, this is James Hendricks. Those are barbecue kitchen. Check out those meatballs and that roast, guys. Just roll that meatloaf up. Bam. Something we got to talk about when you're going on your drum here, make sure you're rotating your grate. The reason is, is with direct heat, guys. You know, it doesn't, if you're on, if you're baking in the kitchen, you don't have to do it. Same principle in the kitchen. You know, if you're using the oven, check out those meatballs, fellas. Woo! Lip smacking good. All right. Remember, for hunters, buy hunters, this is the stuff we're talking about. Bone maker seasoning, Ozark Barbecue, Arkansas. Hey, we'll see you soon. Hey, welcome back to Ozark Barbecue Kitchen. This is James Hendricks. We're talking about bone maker seasoning right now. We're finishing up on the meatloaf. We got it off the smoker. We cooked it at 300 degrees. And remember what I was saying earlier, every 30 minutes, rotate the grate. We're gonna baste it with just a little basting brush with our sauce. Remember what our sauce was. The chili sauce, the Heinz chili sauce. We got the Worcestershire, and then we got the bone juice. Now you're saying, what is bone juice? It's our, it's our barbecue sauce. Nate made the barbecue sauce, just like the seasonings. We've been perfecting them, and now we're using them. And I'm gonna tell you what, mm. you know, I put it on the, meat, the meatballs earlier, and I'm gonna tell you what, when the meatballs came off, you guys saw me. I mean, I had saliva dripping down from my chin like I was a great day. All right, enough about that craziness. Meatloaf. It's a loaf, fellas. Now remember, I applied three times. It's gonna come off looking, looking good, looking good. Now, listen, when I took it off, I did let it set for a little bit. Like I talked earlier, when I took steaks off, um, we wanna let all food, when it first comes off, we're gonna let it rest for a little bit. We're just not gonna slice right into it. Um, I'm expecting this thing to be real moist. I'm expecting this thing to hold together and have great flavor. Um, I held off on the sauce over here just in case you want to put a little more sauce on it. Personally, once I do a meatloaf, um, first night it's with mashed potatoes, some asparagus, broccoli, whatever you want to have with it. The next day, perfect for two pieces of white bread and a slice of meatloaf. And that's just what I'm talking about. Now, the first piece, I always slice a little bit big. Looking good, looking good. Steam's coming off of it. Next piece, and if you notice, you're gonna slice this however you think you wanna slice it. I, I'm slicing it about half inch because that's what I prefer to go on my sandwich. Fellas, tell you what, look at that. Ugh. You see all the ingredients in there? Don't, don't be jelly, don't be jelly. Off the hook, guys. Venison meatloaf. In fact, venison smoked meatloaf. You can taste the peppers, you can taste the onions, you can taste the meat, you can taste everything in it. You can taste the bone maker rub. This stuff is on point. I need two pieces of white bread right now, stat. All right, guys. James Hendricks, bone maker seasoning talks, game rub in the Ozark Barbecue Kitchen. Appreciate your time. You guys want to see more, let us know. Holler at us. We're going to be cooking up game meat all season. Look for us at our first trade show coming up, February 12th to the 14th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Come see us. Try some food. Get some seasoning. Check out the rest of Bone Maker Mineral Products. James out. Appreciate it.